Good afternoon, or good morning. It being 11.15 in the morning on the East Coast of the United States. And today I want to talk about why it is that the Red Book by Dr. C.G. Young, this is the reader's edition of the Red Book. This is the reader's edition of the Red Book. Why it is that the reader's why it is that any edition of the Red Book uh, was not published during Dr. Young's lifetime. And I think that that fundamentally comes down to the point that Dr. Young simply didn't think that there were enough people in society who could understand what the Red Book was all about. It wasn't a secret. He told his close associates about it, but most of these close associates were born either in the late 19th century or very early 20th century. And so they took, they took their knowledge of the Red Book uh, with them to their grave. And of course, there were a lot of things going on in society and the world uh, during the middle years of the 20th century, including uh, the end of World War I, uh, the rise of Adolf Hitler in Germany and of the militarists in Japan, and then World War II. And so it was really not possible to get anyone to pay attention to what Dr. Jung was saying. And of course, it is very important to understand it because as he pointed out, and Edward Edinger, one of his late 20th century disciples, pointed out, these wars that we had in the 20th century were psychic events. And so it's very important for us to understand the psychology, our own psychology, the psychology of society. But people were not ready for it at that time. And today I'm going to read a passage uh, from the 2009 publication. And the significant thing here is to understand that even people like Edward Edinger uh, did not even know possibly that the Red Book existed. Edward Edinger uh, is one of my favorite authors about Jungian topics, and yet I noticed in his main works like Ego and Archetype and um, Archetype of the Apocalypse that the Red Book isn't even mentioned. And of course, Dr. Edinger died in 1998, so he may not have been terribly aware of the centrality of the Red Book during his lifetime. And so we're fortunate that uh, Professor Sonu Shamdasani, who is the Jung history professor at a university in London, took up the task of getting the Red Book out to the public. He apparently, in his research about Jungian psychology, ran across various excerpts of the Red Book and found parts of it in the Yale Library and so on. And so he took it upon himself to convince the heirs of C.G. Jung to allow him to put it together in a beautiful edition, which he did. And it took someone who was ready to understand what Dr. Jung was talking about to do this and have access to it. And this is the brilliance of uh, Dr. Shamnasani, that he understood it and he could spend 13 years of his life bringing it to reality. And so um, today I'm going to read from his uh, introduction to the Red Book. Uh, today I'll be reading from pages 64 to 74 
of the reader's edition of the Red Book by C.G. Young. And this also appears in pages uh, 212 to 215 of the folio edition, the large book, which I've shown on several occasions. And so this will give you a sense of the difficulties in understanding at the beginning of the 20th century when uh, Dr. Young's closest disciples were working with him closely and who understood it. And then you'll appreciate that Dr. Young, after his work on the Red Book, went on to do very much other writing, 20 volumes in the collected works. And the Red Book doesn't even appear in the collected works as yet anyway. Uh, there's rumor that there may be a new collected works sometime in the future, but at this point in time, there is not. And so I'll be reading this section from Dr. Shamdasani to give you an appreciation of the issues that came up in thinking about whether and when to publish the Red Book. And parts of it were published even back in the 19-teens, even 100 years ago. But anyway, uh, so I'm on page 64 of the reader's edition of Liber Novus, the Red Book, the reader's edition by Dr. C.G. Jung. Publication Deliberations. From 1922 onward, an addition to, in addition to discussions with Emma Young and Tony Wolf, Young had extensive discussions with Carrie Baines and Wolfgang Stockmeyer concerning what to do with Liber Novus and around its potential publication. Because these discussions took place when he was still working on it, they are critically important. Carrie Fink was born in 1883. She studied at Vassar College, where she was taught by Christine Mann, who became one of Jung's earliest followers in the United States. In 1910, she married Jamie D'Angelo and completed her medical training at Johns Hopkins in 1911. In 1921, she left him and went to Zurich with Christine Mann. She entered analysis with Jung. She never practiced analysis, and Jung highly respected her critical intelligence. In 1927, she married Peter Baines. They were subsequently divorced in 1931. Jung asked her to make a fresh transcription of Liber Novus because he had added a lot of material since the previous transcription. She undertook this in 1924 and 1925, when Jung was in Africa. Her typewriter was heavy, so she first copied it by hand and then typed it out. These notes recount her discussions with Jung and are written in the form of letters to him, but were not sent. October 20... October... October 2, 1922. In another book of Mayrinks, The White Dominican, you said he made use of exactly the same symbolism that had come to you in the first vision that revealed to you, that revealed to your unconscious. Furthermore, you said he had spoken of a red book which contained certain mysteries and the book that you are writing about the unconscious you have called the Red Book. Then you said you were in doubt as to what to do about that book. Mayrink, who said, Mayrink, you said, could throw his into novel form, and it was all right, but you could only command the scientific and philosophical method, and that stuff you couldn't cast into that mold. I said you could use the Zarathustra form, and you said, that was true, but you were sick of that. I am too. Then you said you had thought of making an autobiography out of it. 
that would seem to me by far the best. Perhaps then you would tend to write as you spoke, which was in very, which was in a very colorful way. But apart from any difficulty with the form, you said you dreaded making it public because it was like selling your house. But I jumped upon you with both feet and there and but I jumped upon you with both feet there and said it wasn't a bit like that because you and the book stood for a constellation of the universe and that to take the book as being purely personal was to identify yourself with it which was something you which was something you would not think of permitting to your patients then we laughed over then we laughed over my having caught you red-handed, as it were. Goethe had been caught in the same difficulty in the second part of Faust, in which he had gotten into the unconscious and found it so difficult to get the right form that he had finally died, leaving the manuscript as such in his drawer. So much, so much of what you had experienced, you said. So much of what you had experienced, you said, would be counted as sheer lunacy, that if it were published, you would lose out altogether, not only as a scientist, but as a human being, but not, but not, I, but not, I said, you went at it from the poetry and truth angle. Then people could make their own selection as to which was which. You objected to presenting any of it, as you objected to presenting any of it as dictum, which I interpret, I guess, to be poetry. You objected to presenting any of it as dictum when it was all werite, werite which I take to be truth. But it does seem, I guess I better... Uh, just check the German translation. I'm sorry if I drop out of this for a moment, uh, but I have to look at translate in Google um, because it's very important. Um, it's very important to understand uh, what he is, what she's saying here, what Dr. Shamdasani is saying. So this is German to English, uh, Dick Tong und, und where height. Okay, poetry and truth. So dictum, dictum is um, poetry. Okay, so let me go back and begin this sentence again. So I'm, um, I'm sorry, I'm on the page 65. But not, I said, if you went at it from dictum and werite, poetry and truth angle, then people would make their own selection as to which was which. You objected to presenting any of it as poetry. Then it was all truth. But it does not seem to me falseness to make use of what. But it does not seem to me falseness to make use of that much of a mask in order to protect yourself from the Philistia, from the Philistines. I presume she's saying. And after all, as I said, Philistia has its rights. Confronted with the choice of you as a lunatic, and themselves as inexperienced fools. They have to choose the former alternative, but if you can place, but if you can place you as a poet, their faces are saved. Much of your material, you said, has come to you as runes, and the explanation of those runes sounds like the veriest nonsense. But that does not matter if the end product is sense. In your case, I said. Apparently, you have become conscious of more of the steps of creation than ever anyone before. 
in most cases, the mind evidently drops out of the irrelevant stuff automatically and delivers the end product, whereas you bring along the whole business, matrix, matrix process, and product. I'm going to read that sentence again. In most cases, the mind evidently drops out the irrelevant stuff automatically and delivers the end product, whereas you bring along the whole business, matrix process, and product. Naturally, it is frightfully more difficult to handle. Then my hour was up. Okay, three months later then. January 1923. What you told me some time ago set me thinking, and suddenly the other day while I was reading the prelude and the theater, the prelude in the theater, and suddenly when I, and suddenly the other day while I was reading Vorspiel auf dem Theater, prelude in the theater, it came to me that you too ought to make use of that principle which Goethe has handled so beautifully all through Faust, namely, the placing in opposition of the creative and eternal with the negative and transient. You may not see right away what this has to do with the Red Book, but I will explain. As I understand it, in this book, you are going to challenge men to a new way of looking at their souls. At any rate, there is going to be in it a good deal that will be out of the grasp of ordinary man. Just as at one period of your own life, you would scarcely have understood it. In a way, it is a jewel you are giving to the world, is it not? My idea is that it needs a sort of protection in order not to be thrown into the gutter and finally made away with by a strangely clad Jew. Um, that's an unfortunate sentence, but nonetheless, that's what she said. The best protection you could devise, it seems to me, would be to put in would be to put in, incorporate the book itself, an, expo an, expo an exposition of the forces that will attempt to destroy it. It is one of your great gifts, strength of seeing the black as well as the white of every given situation. So you will know better than most of the people who attack the book what it is that they want to destroy. Could you not take the wind out of their sails by writing their criticism for them? Perhaps that is the very thing you have done in the introduction. Perhaps you would rather assume towards the public the attitude of, quote, take it or leave it, and be blessed or be damned, whichever you prefer, unquote. That would be all right, whatever there is of truth. Whatever there is of truth in it is going to survive in any case. But I would like to see you do the other thing if it were. But I would like to see you do the other thing if it did not call for too much effort. A year later, January twenty sixth, nineteen twenty four. You had the night before had a dream in which I appeared in a disguise and was to do work on the red book and you had been thinking about it all that day, and during Dr. Wharton's hour, preceding mine especially, pleasant for her, I must say, as, <laughs> as you had said, you had made up your mind to turn over to me all of your unconscious material represented by the Red Book, etc., to, to see what I, as a stranger, and per to see what I, as a stranger and an impartial observer, would say about it. You thought I had a good critique and an impartial one. Tony, you said, was deeply interwoven with it and besides did not take any interest in the thing in itself, nor in getting it into usable form. She is lost in, quote, bird fluttering, unquote, you said. For yourself, you said you had always known 
what to do with your ideas, but here you were baffled. When you approached them, you became enmeshed, as it were, and could no longer be sure of anything. You were certain some of them had great importance, but you could not find the appropriate form, as they were now you, as, as they were now you said, as they were now you said, they might come out of a madhouse. As they were now, you said, they might come out of a madhouse. So then you said, I was to copy down the contents of the Red Book once before you had had it copied, but you had since then added a great deal of material. So you wanted it done again, and you would explain things to me as I went along, for you understood nearly everything in it, you said. In this way, you could come to discuss many things which never came up in my analysis, and I could understand your ideas from the foundation. You told me then something more of your own attitude toward the Red Book. You said some of it hurt. You said that some of it hurt your sense of fitness of things terribly, and that you had shrunk from putting it down as it came to you, but that you had started on the principle of, quote, voluntariness, unquote that is, of making no corrections, and so you had stuck to that. Some of the pictures were absolutely infantile, but were intended so to be. There were various figures speaking. Elias, Elias, Father Philemon, etc., but all appeared to be phases of what you thought ought to be called the master. You said, sure, you were sure that this latter was the same who inspired Buddha, Mani, Christ, Mohammed, all those who may be said to have communed with God. But the others had identified with him. You absolutely refused to. It could not be for you, you said. You had to remain the psychologist, the person who understood the process. I said then that the thing to be done was to enable the world to understand the process also without their getting the notion that they had the master caged, as it were, at their beck and call. They had to think of him as a pillar of fire, perpetually moving on and forever out of human grasp. Yes, you said, it was something like that. Perhaps it cannot be done. Perhaps it cannot yet be done. As you talked, I grew more and more aware of the image. As you talked, I became more and more aware of the immeasurability of the ideas which are filling you. You said they had the shadow of eternity upon them, and I could feel the truth of it. You said they had the shadow of eternity upon them, and I could feel the truth of it. On January 30, she noted that Jung said of a dream which she had told him, that it, that it was a preparation for the Red Book, because the Red Book told of the battle between the world of reality and the world of the spirit. You said in that battle you had been very nearly torn asunder, but that you had managed to keep your feet on the earth and make an effect on reality, that you said, that you said for you was the test of any idea, and that you had no respect for any ideas, however winged, that had to exist off in space and were unable to beat, and were unable to make an impression on reality. There is an undated fragment of a letter there is an undated fragment of a letter draft to an unidentified person in which Carrie Baines expresses her view of the significance of Liber Novus and the necessity of its publication. Quote, so this was Carrie Baines uh, writing to some unidentified person. I am absolutely thunderstruck, for example, as I read the Red Book, and see all that is told there for the right way for us of today to find how Tony has to find how Tony 
has kept it out of her system. She wouldn't have an unconscious spot in her psyche had she digested even as much as she wouldn't have an unconscious spot in her psyche had she digested even as much of the Red Book as I have read, and that I should think was not a third or a fourth. And another difficult thing to understand is why she has no interest in seeing him publish it. There are people in my country who would read it from cover to cover without stopping to breathe scared. There are people in my country, she, she's talking about the U.S. There are people in my country who would read it from cover to cover without stopping to breathe scarcely. So does it re, so does it re-envisage and clarify the things that are today, staggering everyone who is trying to find the clue to life. He has put into it all the vigor and color of his speech, all the directness and simplicity that come when, as at Cornwall, the fire burns in him. Of course, it may be that he. Of course, it may be that, as he says, if he published it as it is, he would forever be hors de combat in the world of rational science. But then there must be some way around that some way of protecting himself against stupidity in order that the people who would want the book in order that the people who would want the book need not go without for a time it would in order that the people who would want the book need to go without for the time it will take the majority to get ready for it I always knew he must be able to write the fire that he can speak, and here it is. His published books are doctored up for the world at large, and rather they are written out of his head, and this out of his heart. Unquote. These discussions vividly these discussions vividly portray the depth of Jung's deliberations concerning the publication of Liber Novus, his sense of its centrality in comprehending the genesis of his work, and his fear that the work would be misunderstood. The impression that the style of the work would make on an unsuspecting public strongly concerned Jung. He later recalled to Aniela Jaffe that the work still needed a suitable form in which it could be brought into the world because it sounded like prophecy, which was not to his taste. They, there appears to have been some discussion concerning these issues in Jung's circles. There seems to have been some discussion concerning these issues in Jung's circle. On May 29, 1924, Carrie Baines noted a discussion with Peter Baines in which he argued that Liber Novus could be understood only by someone who had known Jung. By, by contrast, she thought that the book was, quote, the record of the passage of the universe through the soul of a man. And just as a person stands by the sea and listens to that very strange and awful music, and cannot explain why his heart aches or why a cry of exultation wants to leap from his throat. So I thought it would be with the Red Book, and that a man would be perforce lifted out of himself by the majesty of it and swung to heights he had never been before." Unquote. There are further signs that Jung circulated copies of Liber Novus to confidants and that the material was discussed together with the possibilities of its publication. One such colleague was Wolfgang Stockmeyer. Jung met, Stock, Jung met Stockmeyer in 1907. In his unpublished obituary, Jung nominated him as the first German to be interested in his work. He recalled that Stockmeyer was a true friend. They traveled together in Italy and Switzerland and there, was a, and there was seldom a year in which they did not meet. Jung commented, quote, He distinguished himself 
through his great interest and equally great understanding for pathological psychic processes. I also found with him a sympathetic reception for my broader viewpoint, which became the importance for my later comparative psychological works." Unquote. Stockmeyer accompanied Jung in Stockmeyer accompanied Jung in the valuable penetration of our psychology into classical Chinese philosophy, the mystical speculations of India and Tantric Yoga. On December 22, 1924, Stockmeyer wrote to Jung. On December 22, 1924, Stockmeyer wrote to Jung. I often long for the Red Book, and I would like to have a transcript of what is available. I failed to do so when I had it. As things go, I recently fantasized about a kind of journal of documents in a loose form for materials from the, quote, forge of the unconscious, unquote, with words and colors. It appears that, unquote, it appears that Jung sent some material to him. On April 30, 1925, Stockmeyer wrote to Jung, quote, In the meantime, we have gone through scrutinies, and it is the same impression as with the Great Wandering. A selected collective, me a selected collective milieu for such, a selected collective milieu for such from the Red Book is certainly worth trying out although your commentary would be quite desired. Since a certain adjacent center of yours lies here, ample access to sources is of great significance, consciously and unconsciously. I obviously fantasize about facsimiles, which you will understand. You need not fear extroversion magic from me. Painting also has great appeal." Unquote. Jung's manuscript commentaries, see Appendix B, was possibly connected with these discussions. Thus, figures in Jung's circle held differing views concerning the significance of the thus, thus figures in Jung's circle held differing views concerning the significance of Liber Novus and whether it should be published, which may have been which may have had bearings on Jung's eventual decisions. Carrie Baines did not complete the transcription, getting as far as the twenty getting as far as the first twenty seven pages of scrutinies. For the next few years her time was taken up with the translation of Jung's essays into English, followed by the translation of the I Ching. At some stage, which I estimate to be in the mid-twenties, Jung went back to the draft and edited it again. Jung went back to the draft and edited it again, deleting and adding material on approximately 250 pages. His revisions served to modernize the language and terminology. He also revised some of the material that he had already transcribed into the calligraphic volume of Liber Novus, as well as some material that was left out. It is hard to see why he undertook it is hard to see why he undertook this unless he was seriously considering publishing it. In nineteen twenty five, Jung presented his seminars on analytical psychology to the Psychological Club. Here he discussed some of the important fantasies in Liber Novus. He described how they unfolded and indicated how they formed the basis of the ideas in psychological types and the key to understanding its genesis. The seminar was transcribed and edited by Carrie Baines. That same year, Peter Baines prepared an English translation of the Septum Sermonis Ad Mortuus, the Seven Sermons to the Dead, which was privately published. Jung gave copies to some of his English-speaking students. In a letter that would, 
in a letter that is presumably a reply to one from Henry Murray thanking in a letter that is presumably a reply to one from Henry Murray thanking him for a copy, Jung wrote, quote, I am deeply convinced that those ideas that came to me are really quite wonderful things. I can easily say that without blushing, because I know how resistant and how foolishly obstinate I was when they first visited me and what a trouble it was until I could read this symbolic language so much superior to my dull conscious mind." Unquote. It is possible that Jung may have considered the publication of the Sermones as a trial for the publication of Liber Novus. Barbara Hanna claims that he regretted publishing it and that he felt strongly that it should only have been written in the Red Book. At some point, Jung wrote a manuscript entitled Commentaries, which provided a commentary on chapters 9, 10, and 11 of Liber Primus, see Appendix B. He had discussed some of these fantasies in his 1925 seminar, and he goes into more detail here. From the style and conceptions, I would estimate that this text was written in. From the style and conceptions, I would estimate that this text was written in the mid 1920s. He may have written or intended to write further commentaries for other chapters, but these have not come to light. This manuscript indicates the amount of work he put into understanding each and every detail of his fantasies. Jung gave a number of people copies of Liber Novus, Carrie Baines, Peter Baines, Aniela Jaffe, Wolfgang Stockmeyer, and Tony Wolf. Copies may also have been given to others. In 1937, a fire destroyed Peter Baines's house and damaged his copy of Liber Novus. A few years later, he wrote to Jung asking if by chance he had another copy and offered to translate it. Jung replied, I will try whether I can procure another copy of the Red Book. Please don't worry about translations. I am sure there are two or three translations already, but I don't know of what and by whom. <clears throat> This supposition was presumably based on the number of copies of the work in circulation. Jung let the following individuals read and or look at Liber Novus. Richard Hall, Tina Keller, James Kirsch, Simena Roeli de Angelo as a child, and Kurt Wolf. Aniela Jaffe read the Black Books. And Tina, and Tina Keller was also allowed to read sections of the Black Books. Jung most likely showed the book to other close associates, such as Emil Metner, Franz Rickland Sr., Erika Schlegel, Hans Trobe, and Marie-Louise von Franz. It appears, that he la it appears that he allowed those people to read Liber Novus, whom he fully trusted, and whom he felt had a full grasp of his ideas. Quite a number of his students did not fit into this category. Okay, so the, that is what Sonar Shamdasani had to say in the introduction of the Red Book Liber Novus, Reader's Edition CG, by C.G. Young. It also, it appears on pages 64 to 74 of the reader's edition and on pages 212 to 215 of the folio edition. Good morning, Miles. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, I will stay for a couple of more minutes to see if there are any other thoughts uh, on this reading. Uh, I'm going to attempt to finish the discussion of the series of Provorst tomorrow at the weekly group meeting, group meeting number 105, but 
uh, I seem to be coming down with a cold, and so it may be that that group meeting may have to be postponed. Um, in any case, um, if anyone has any comments or questions, I'll be happy to take them now. Otherwise, I'm going to terminate for today. And uh, seeing none, I'm going to uh, close. Dr. Young, in the folio edition, has a number of mandalas, and he discusses mandalas in the folio edition. And so I'm going to leave you with this meme that was prepared about the meaning of mandalas.